What is up, everybody? I'm here today with Casey, who is a performance dietitian. And we just I just went over with him, like, how shall I introduce you? Because he wears a few different hats. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. Casey, um, why don't you give people a bit of background about about you, what you do, and your, where your specialties actually lie, and why why you're here on sort of an, uh, an esports-oriented podcast? Yeah, no. Um, so first off, thanks for having me. Uh, I, I love being on these kind of things, and I always enjoy our conversations. But um, yeah, I think you introduced me fine. Uh, performance dietitian is the term that I use more often than not when I introduce myself, which basically means I tell people what to eat in order to perform better in whatever arena that they are in. Uh, and, and so, you know, in as far as esports is concerned, uh, I actually am a director of nutrition at 1HP, and we're a team of medical providers who works with and we're contracted with pretty much uh, most of the top tier esports organizations in the nation. And we provide support, uh, medical and performance services to these individuals. So I'm, I'm currently actively very active uh, in the esports scene, uh, working with a lot of these uh, esports athletes. So I love the esports scene, um, and it's currently my home. <laughs> uh, but I do wear uh, multiple hats. Um, I did come from a traditional sports nutrition background, uh, where I was working at the collegiate level and also the professional level. So I've worked with a lot of professional athletes, you know, gold medaling Olympians. Uh, I was the, you know, I was the the dietitian over at UCLA athletics for a while. Um, I'm also an instructor, uh, so I teach at both UCLA and Cal State LA, and I'm a peer reviewer for scientific journals because I am a nerd for the nutrition science. Um, <laughs> but uh, outside of that, um, I, I consider myself a nutrition guinea pig, and pretty much any diet or supplement that you can think of, I have tried and tried diligently, even if I knew it was going to be bad on the front end. Like I'm like, I know this diet is going to be absolutely terrible for me. Um, and, and fun, fun story. I actually was on a diet one time that messed up my blood work for like six months. It was awful. Whoa. And, uh, yeah, that was rough. Um, but, but I do it anyway. If, if I have two of my clients that I hear mention the same diet or supplement or whatever, I'm like, I have to try it because I need to like have walk the walk and then also be able to pair that up with, you know, it's like, okay, this is what the science says. And I actually did it. So let me just tell you, you know, what the real story is here. Um, so, so that's really fun for me to, to do that too. So, um, I, I just love nutrition. Um, it's kind of the small little sliver of competence that I have. <laughs> well, <laughs> when you said that you, you tried everything, that was one of the first questions that came to my mind was not like, what was the best thing you tried was what was the most <laughs> suffering that you experienced? So what was the, yeah, what was the worst, <laughs> what was the worst one you tried and why was it so terrible? All right. So, so the diet, this is an old diet that not a lot of people have heard of. This was, uh, Gosh, it was probably like seven or eight years ago now. Um, but it was it's called GOMAD. So GOMAD oh, is an oh acronym, my God, yeah. which, sta which stands for gallon of milk a day. Mm -hmm. um, and this is whole milk. And this is uh, to be consumed in addition to your average daily diet. So uh, you're typically adding about two to three calories, two to three thousand calories on the day by consuming this extra gallon of milk. And what the who this is marketed to is... Um, mostly skinny teenage boys who can't put on weight. And by the way, that was kind of my history. Um, when I was in high school, I was a skinny teenage boy who couldn't grow. And I'm pretty tall. I'm, I'm like 6'5". So it's tough to grow up and out at the same time. But at the time, I was very self-conscious about it. Um, so I had, I'd heard about this diet, but I hadn't actually done it until much later. And then I try, I was like, you know what, let's, let's go try it out. Like I had another client who was mentioning like go mad diet. And it wasn't something I thought was going to be um, particularly healthy. I suspected it was going to do a number on me. Um, but I couldn't argue with the fact that it definitely puts you in a calorie surplus. <laughs> uh, so, so there, there was that aspect to it, right? It's like, okay, this is definitely a way to put you in a calorie surplus. If you are struggling with eating amount of calories, this might not be the smartest way to do it by far, but I'm going to try it out and see what happens. And let me tell you, I, I did it for 30 days because I pretty much that's that's my timeline. I usually do whatever test I'm doing for 30 days. And after the first few days, like not to get gross, but I was basically in the bathroom like all the time. Uh, it was really, really tough on my stomach and I could not handle it. And I was just like it was in one end out both ends kind of thing. Um, it was it was rough. And I was just like forcing it down as much as I could. Um, I gained weight expectedly, but it was pretty much all fat. So, you know, I was getting pudgy. Um, and, and then when I got my pre-post blood work done, my blood had turned into like 
bacon grease mixed with maple syrup or something like it was absolutely <laughs> awful. Um, and, and so it, it took, yeah, it took like six months of work after that to just get my blood, like cholesterol and everything back into level. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that one still, that diet still gives me some nightmares. Um, and, and by the way, I, I love milk too. So that's why I was like, Oh, I can do this. Like I can test this out because I, I love milk. Like that's, that's a drink that I grew up drinking. Um, my family's from the South and, you know, farms and shit. So, uh, that, that was something that I, uh, I, I grew up loving. And so I was like that, and I, you know, I'm lactose tolerant, so I can have milk. So I was like, I should be fine, but I was not fine. Um, so that was definitely the worst diet that I've had. <laughs> that's actually really funny. Cause, cause yeah. I, I actually do remember like, like over a decade ago when people were talking about it quite a lot. Cause I had a friend who was, he was definitely like a, he was a tall person as well. And he was really skinny, like a hard gainer. And he was, he was talking about it, but like, I didn't know anyone of all the people that talked about it. They were like, actually like, what we're going to try to do that because it's just so <laughs> just even just consuming, like even consuming a gallon of water a day is difficult and yeah. like, let alone, um, you know, everything else. And that kind of segues us nicely, actually. Um, cause the first topic that I want to cover and, and just for, for anybody who's, who's watching this, I think, uh, firstly, you know, in esports, we don't have a, I mean, there's, there's a lot of question marks, I think, around performance and the things that might actually impact performance. And this is in large part why I brought sort of Casey on. I work with him um, at 100 Thieves um, as he is part of 1HP and 1HP was providing performance services to to the various 100 Thieves uh, squads. So we got to know each other and, uh, you know, spoke to him at length about like helping our players and, those, and so on and so forth. And, you know, I've, I think all this stuff is really fascinating. Obviously, if you're familiar with my channel, you know, I love this kind of stuff. And, and I was also quite surprised at how much Casey knew and how much of the stuff he was saying I really hadn't heard anywhere else. So, so we can kind of really go across the gamut um, as we as we cover these different topics of stuff that we like. Know, like we know, for example, that hydration is important, but but we can take that as our first topic. And and Casey, you know what? Like when it comes to people saying things are good for you, um, like we don't, <laughs> it's hard to say. Like I don't know what it means. Like when when we we say there's a cognitive benefit of of hydration of you know being well hydrated. Um, mm -hmm. firstly, you know, I don't know, like, like, sure, I, I can drink a lot of water, but I don't know how much I should drink, you know, at what, mm -hmm. at what points of the day, um, you know, what's, what, what is it, what does the cognitive benefit actually mean? And how does that, how does that relate to the task that we're trying to perform, which is, which is to, you know, be good at, you know, video games. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a really interesting question. And I think it's something that a lot of the scientific literature really does struggle with, um, both in traditional sports and in the esports arena, which is simply, how do you define performance? Right. And depending on the title in esports, um, you're going to see a, a multitude of different factors that you could use as kind of a barometer for performance. Um, but as far as the actual players themselves, like when you ask them what is performance, most of them will simply tell you it's wins and losses. That's that's at the end of the day, kind of what it comes down to for them. Um, and they don't really realize that uh, there's there's so many other aspects to it that could play a hand in it that we have defined in, say, the scientific literature. Um, and so I, I do like to, on the front end of a season with a team that I'm working with, just ha have a conversation with the team and say, uh, first off, how do you define you know performance or whether or not an athlete is going to be successful? Or, or these kind of things. And so I like to have that conversation with them. Um, so that way they can start listing out and start thinking about to them what, what is important. Um, and, and usually when I have this conversation, a lot of them will say things like, uh, you know, innate talent, they'll say uh, motivation, they'll say uh, uh, the grind, um, they'll say teamwork, they'll say, uh, uh, you know, showing up every day, like, th there's a lot of stuff that that players will say, and they each have this different idea about what success and what performance could mean. Um, and, and so I, I think having that conversation uh, with the athletes first is, is really important because you get to see where their headspace is at. But um, then when we try to come in and mention, okay, hey, hydration is good for you. Um, here's why. What I try to do is I try to link the why to what they already say. So like if they say, oh, reaction time is important or, um, you know, being uh, uh, untiltable, you know, like being resilient to stressors, um, like those kind of things, then, you know, I'm like, okay, so so I'm going to try to hit on these metrics that that you maybe didn't realize are actually like scientific metrics. And I'm gonna try to hit on those and tell you that, you know, and show you that that these things can can be uh, improved with um, nutrition, because I'm the nutrition guy. Uh, but but uh, I do just want to take a quick little aside and say, you know, I fully acknowledge nutrition isn't everything. It's it's just one small component of, you know, a lot of other pieces that go into ultimately defining what performance is for for a sport. But um, uh, 
uh, I, I do I do believe truly that nutrition can impact so much of it. And uh, in something like esports, um, there was I, I did some analysis on this a couple of years ago, and I was looking at like what what is the the competitiveness of of esports relative to traditional sports. And so what I did was I was like, okay, well, let's say this, these are how many people are trying to go pro in say like, you know, football or basketball or baseball or whatever. And then these are how many people are trying to go pro in a given esport title. <clears throat> and then what I, what I was looking at was how, how likely is it just like pure, you know, what's the statistical chance that you can become a professional in, in an esport title compared to a traditional sport. And what I found was it's actually over five times as challenging to become a professional esport player than it is to become a professional traditional athlete. So you're more like, likely to become like the starting quarterback for the Patriots than you are to become, you know, the starting, you know, in-game shot caller for whatever your title is, uh, you know. And, and so that, that kind of blew my mind. I was like, dang, like it, it's crazy hard to become a professional esport athlete. And, and so, you know, most, most esport players don't know that. Um, but the, the important bit that I want to highlight here is that when it is that competitive, then every little edge that you can get matters. Like any edge that you can get that you have a controllable ability to modify, I feel like you should be trying to leverage that. And so long-winded, you know, I'm getting up to, to hydration now. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I do like hydration. And one of the reasons why I like uh, focusing on hydration so much in this population is because it is the quickest strategy. Um, and frequently in the realm of nutrition, I really struggle with demonstrating value to individuals. That's the number one hurdle that I have as a nutrition professional is to demonstrate the value of nutrition to an individual. And the reason is because there's a huge time gap between when it, there's a disconnect between when you do the nutrition thing and when you do the performance thing. Um, it's very intuitive, for example, it's like, oh, I'm working with a physical therapist and they're helping me out with my wrist and I have a history of wrist injuries or something, right? And it's like, it's very intuitive. Okay, well, I need to stretch my wrist. And now I have no pain in my wrist. And now I'm playing and you know, I'm doing better. Um, but if I tell you to eat a piece of broccoli, then there's there's a big time gap between when okay, did the, the broccoli do anything for you playing tomorrow or something, you know, and there's this huge disconnect. So um, it's very hard to see the direct link between, you know, the nutrition factor and the performance factor. But with hydration, this is the quickest thing that we can do short of uh, like a pharmaceutical or a supplement. This is the quickest thing that we can leverage. And it only takes 24 to 48 hours to adjust your hydration status. And because of this, this means that if you just take your hydration seriously for like two days, then boom, um, if that was a factor that was holding you back, now it's not a factor that's holding you back. And you will be able to measure that difference with a lot of different things. Um, so that's, that's, that's point one. I, I really like to talk about hydration with individuals because it's so quick and it's so easy. It's like, just drink some more water, right? You'll see me sipping on my water. Um, so that's, that's point one. Um, the, the other thing that I want to say is, uh, at least when I was in kindergarten, they told me that the human body is mostly water. They're like, oh, did you know that you're like 60% water or something? Or like at least half your body is water. And everyone's like, oh my God, so cool. Like half your body is water, crazy. Um, the, the interesting thing that I learned um, my uh, undergraduate degree was in neurobiology, and I'm, I'm just fascinated by the brain. Um, the, the interesting thing that I learned was that the brain is actually a big old water sponge. The brain is as much as 70 to 75% water in comparison to the rest of your body, which has a much smaller percentage. And what this means is any tiny, teeny little bit of dehydration that you have is actually manifesting itself to a much larger degree in your brain than it is in the rest of your body. So you might not even be thirsty, but your brain might be dehydrated. And what we know is that if you have just a 1% dehydration, just 1% dehydration, this significantly, you can measure this and it's linear, okay? It's a linear relationship. So the degree of your dehydration is the degree of, of what I'm about to say. Um, we can measure the impairments to every single, it doesn't matter what it is, every single cognitive metric that we look at gets impaired as a function of dehydration. And it starts at just 1%. Um, and, and that's, that's shocking. Like that, that should be shocking to people. Um, it, like you can essentially what I'm saying is you can measure how dumb or how, um, ineffective you are as a function of your dehydration. And it's just, it's a perfectly linear relationship. So it's like, if you're 1% dehydrated, you're this much worse. If you're 2% dehydrated, you're this much 3%, 4%. And it's just, it's just perfectly linear and it's crazy. Um, and in fact, when we look at it under a brain scan, 
what you can see is a dehydrated brain actually shrinks like it physically shrinks like your brain shrinks and uh there there you know i like i get memed on a little bit when i'm talking to uh esports athletes but uh, there's like this joke that kind of goes around where like don't don't be a raisin brain uh you know you don't want to have this little shrunken shriveled up uh wrinkly brain uh so just make sure you're drinking your water so um uh uh, the, 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 you mentioned like what performance measures um, in, in, in the case of hydration, it's every performance measure. I don't care what, like you, you could just say whatever you wanted to that came to the top of your head. And the answer is yes. Dehydration impacts it. <laughs> it's, it's funny because I was just I felt like nervously reaching for my water glass whilst you were talking there. And I wonder how many people listening to this <laughs> are always like looking around their desk, looking for the, for the, for the water glass. Um, yeah. But uh, oh, I'll, gi I'll, I'll give some other like little scary stats about this too. Um, mm -hmm. Just maybe for the listeners, um, maybe anybody who's in school, um, they did a test where you, you know, um, those like uh, university auditoriums, you know, they see like 400 students or whatever, those kind of things. Um, they did some studies where they, uh, they had people come into their final exam and all they did was they gave half of the class randomly a water bottle to sip on during the exam and the other class didn't get the water bottle to sip on the average grade of the people who had the water bottle to sip on was 9% higher. So basically a full letter grade better on their final exam, just because you were sipping on water during the course of the exam. Now, admittedly, that's not adjusting your hydration status. That's through a different mechanism, but it still just kind of shows the power of, you know, it's just like just a bottle of water. Right. And immediately you're like 9% smarter. Isn't that cool? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's really interesting because it is one thing that's very easy to, to do. And, and, and also there is, I guess, some other variables where, you know, certain behaviors might dehydrate you, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that people commonly do that you find like, you know, common habits that would be prevalent in the demographics that we, you know, that we see playing video games that like would dehydrate you? Yeah, um, there's quite a few. And I think, I think um, esports individuals are, are more susceptible to this, which is, um, so, so if I talk to, to esports athletes, most of them will fully acknowledge that they are not drinking enough water. And they also fully acknowledge that water is good for you. Like if I ask them and I say, do you think water is good for you? They'll say yes. And if I say, do you think you're drinking enough? And they say no. And you know, it's, it's, it's a very easy thing to ask people. And they're also very honest and open and they can, you know, there's a self-awareness there. Um, whereas a lot of times with nutrition, there might not be that self-awareness that what they're doing is wrong. But in the realm of hydration, there's there's usually a very clear self-awareness that's going on. And I think what well what I've seen in in my experience is that uh, it's not that they don't want to drink water. It's usually I don't want to say lazy, but they're they're or maybe distracted is the better word because they might be in these gaming sessions or gaming blocks or scrim blocks or whatever it is. And usually they're just so focused on it that they forget to drink water. That's usually what it is, is it's usually people are just being forgetful because they're so focused on whatever it is they're doing. And I, I'm guilty of this, you know, like I, I might have like, I shouldn't, you know, I should get up and walk around and everything, but I've definitely done, you know, like six, eight hours straight playing a game. You're just, you know, it's uh, whatever it is. And it's just, you don't get up, you don't do anything. You forget to use the bathroom. You forget to drink water. You forget to move. Like all this stuff happens. And in the esports arena, um, especially if your schedule is being dictated by like, oh, this is when the other team can scrim right now. Uh, and if there's like, you know, you have other obligations around you, you know, there's like media obligations, different coaches want to talk to you, you know, you got to do VOD reviews, you got to talk to your teammates. Like there's a lot of things that are happening usually in the esports scene. And so if water is not readily available around them and easy to get their hands on, usually they just forget to drink. And so... I think um, the first high risk thing I would say is just the, the physical environment in which you're in. If it doesn't have easy, convenient access to water, you're probably not going to drink it. If you have to like walk to the other, you know, to a different floor in the compound to get a glass of water and it's like, oh, I have to get a cup that's on the shelf and I got to fill it up and I'm away from the team for like five minutes. You know, that's probably not going to happen. Like you're probably not going to do that. You're not going to take that effort to go get the water. But if there's like a mini fridge in the team playroom and it's stocked with water bottles and it's three feet away from you, uh, you know, or you have a refillable on your desk, but I don't know if, you know, some teams don't like to do that because if they spill there's ri risks and so on to the to the computers but um you know like if it's just easy access uh so that's that's usually risk one is just um being in a physical environment that doesn't have easy access to water is a real struggle to to most people 
Um, some other things are uh, not having a schedule that's conducive to sipping on water. Uh, so sometimes people just have back to back to back to backs. Um, and if there's literally no time in which for them to to physically grab something, uh, this also leads to people under eating a lot of the time too. It's just they're, it's not that they don't recognize that they need to eat. It's just they haven't had time and they're so distracted with what they're doing. Um, so, so the physical environment plays a big part. Um, and then there are a couple other things that, that can happen too with hydration. Um, there are a couple key times where hydration is uh, more at risk. And one of those times is first thing in the morning. So at any given time, you are losing a bunch of fluid from your body. You are uh, respiring. So you're breathing in and out and you're losing water that way. Um, you might not be sweating, but your skin is giving off moisture as well throughout the day. Uh, you're going to go to the bathroom. That's going to lose moisture. Um, so, so there's a lot of... Um, uh, instances where we are just perpetually losing fluid throughout the day that we have to replenish. And at nighttime, that is like a, for sure, well, that's an eight hour block right there. I hope it's an eight hour block for you guys. Um, but that's like an eight hour block where you are unconscious and you are not drinking any water, right? So you have one third of your day where you don't have access to drinking water. And so when you wake up first thing, um, that's a very high risk time point for individuals because you are at your most dehydrated right when you first wake up. And I like to tell people, um, you know, first thing when you wake up in the morning, uh, I, I keep this one, this is the one, this is my favorite one for some reason. Um, this particular one, I keep this one right by my bed. And first thing I do before I do anything, like I don't even sit up in bed really yet. I don't go to the bathroom. I don't go brush my teeth. I don't do anything. The first thing I do, I do 12 gulps of water uh, before I even get out of bed. And this just helps to replenish that water that you lost while you were asleep. So that's that's one high risk time period of time. And, and oh, the reason why I do 12 gulps is because usually one gulp is about one and a half ounces, and that equates to about 16 ounces of fluid, which is a good number to go for. Um, the other high risk time that I'll mention is uh, when you're not on your routine. And so usually for most individuals, the routine breaks down on weekends. So on the weekends, what happens is people tend to have altered sleep patterns, they tend to have altered eating patterns, they tend to have altered hydration patterns, uh, they tend to have altered physical activity patterns. It's like, oh, maybe I go for a hike on the weekend, or maybe I'm going out, maybe I'm just like walking around, I'm going to, you know, whatever. So it, it's usually very different. And you've usually broken your routine on the weekends. And so Mondays are another super, super high risk time point for most individuals. Um, just because they probably weren't getting enough fluid over the weekend. People tend to lose it over the weekend when their normal routines break down. Um, so those are probably uh, two of the most common ones. Um, the third one I'll, I'll just mention is uh, simply not drinking enough. <laughs> uh, most people are chronically underhydrated and uh, they don't realize that they need a little bit more. So they might just be like floating in the, the subclinically dehydrated range where they're just... Um, all the time a little bit dehydrated. And so if you're not paying attention to that, that's that's kind of a, a big deal. Um, there are some foods and some things that can accelerate hydration uh, loss. So um, certain certain pharmaceutical compounds can, can play a number. Um, uh, a lot of people will talk about like caffeine and how maybe this is a diuretic. This is not actually a diuretic in people who are caffeine habituated, uh, meaning like anyone who is used to drinking like a cup of coffee a day or something, uh, caffeine is no longer really a diuretic. And actually caffeine, um, or, or sorry, like in, in the instance of like a coffee or a tea, um, those are net additive to your body as far as fluid goes. So th those aren't strictly in a true sense of dehydrating uh, beverage. Um, it's drinking Diet Coke hydrating, Casey. Because I feel like there's a lot of people out there drinking <laughs> Diet Coke and being like, oh, it's basically like in you know, the water in here and so on. So, yeah. So, okay. So here, here's, <laughs> uh, here's the reality on this. Um, um, hydration. And we, we have something called like a hydration index. And what we can do is we can rate a beverage's ability to hydrate you relative to something. And the thing that we use as our standard, our gold standard is just water. And so all of these fluids... And there are a bunch of foods too, as well. Um, all of these fluids can be rated against this. And most of them are worse than water at what water does. So like if you have a juice or if you have a diet soda or something, these will still be net additive to your body's hydration status, but it might not be as efficient 
as drinking pure water. And there are some beverages that are actually uh, uh, more efficient than water. And usually these come with like added uh, additional like electrolytes and so on. These are actually hyper efficient at adding, you know, that fluid to your body. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so diet Cokes, diet sodas, yes, they do add hydration to your body, but they aren't quite as efficient at doing it as water. And so I do have some athletes, usually it's, it's a, it's a non-issue. Like usually I will say it's a non-issue. Like I want you to have X amount of fluid per day um, for, for the raw purposes of hydration. I'm not endorsing someone just drinking, you know, a gallon of soda every single day. That's not the move. <laughs> um, but um, what I do want to say is it's usually not an issue unless that is your predominant source of fluid intake uh, for the pure purposes of hydration status. So I have had some athletes uh, who they refuse to drink actual water. They say it tastes bad and they refuse to have actual <laughs> water. So, so like I, I had one athlete, I'm not going to name name. Um, I had one athlete uh, just this last year who refused to drink water. And so the last time he actually had just a pure <laughs> drop of like regular water was like months ago, something like that. That's insane. Um, yeah, predominantly they were drinking tea and then uh, like sparkling um, stuff and uh, with like flavor drops. And uh, that, that was basically the, the primary consumption of it. Or like they would mix in powders to their, um, to their thing just to make it have a flavor profile. So for them, if that is you, if that's someone who, you know, if, if I'm describing you right now, <laughs> um, you should be aware that because it is lower efficiency, uh, you probably have to add on like one extra cup of that in order to make up the difference for the loss in efficiency, uh, just to maintain your hydration status. Now you might want to reevaluate that because I don't recommend that. And that's probably negative for you for many other reasons. So please like seriously consider, you know, improving your fluid game, but for the raw purposes of hydration, if you are set in your ways and this is what you have to do in order to get any fluid in, uh, consider adding one extra, uh, of those beverages. So that way you can uh, overcome that, that, uh, lack of efficiency. One, one thing I've noticed is at least in me personally, is that I adapt like pretty quickly to the amount of water I am drinking or, or, and, mm. and it goes the other way too. If, if I'm drinking a lot, then I'll yeah. tend to get more thirsty and if like quite ironically, and if I'm drinking less, I'll get less thirsty. So obviously that there's, you know, there's, there's a reason for, for that, that we adapt in that way to make our lives easier, but obviously in the modern, modern way of living, when we have access to water all the time and whenever we want it, that's obviously not ideal. So, and I think that's something I just wanted to add because I want people to be sort of, I'm sure that people will know this because I think it's one of those things we all experience it. We've all noticed that we've all had water more, like more in certain periods than others. And we, we, I think we will notice that difference. But just wanted to call that out because it can be really easy to to underestimate the amount of water that you're actually drinking, which is why um, it's really just better to not rely on how you feel about it, but just having like... And, and I think going to Casey's point about how difficult it can be once you're... Like with, with gaming sessions as well, it can be quite difficult to if, if the access is not super easy to to get hydrated so just like having not just like a glass but like actually like a bottle that's like a, at least like a liter is probably probably the way to go so you can say okay this x amount of these a, a day or whatever's um whatever can work for you um is probably the way to go um because you can't really trust how you feel about your hydration because it's not it's, it's usually a lie <laughs> yeah yeah and um that's something that i uh, that's a really important point actually that i want to highlight here which is um Thirst is not a good cue for hydration status. Thirst is your body's way of, um, that's, that's the, oh crap signal. Like I am already dehydrated. You must get me water or else I will eventually die because of this dehydration. That is, that is literally what the thirst signal is, is the protection against you dying from, from dehydration. And so this is, this is far too late. Um, because let's say you experience thirst right before you go out for your scrim or for your tournament or whatever, right? If you're experiencing thirst at that time point, what that's, and then you, you decide to go chug, a, you know, like a liter of water right then and there, um, you chug that liter of water. Okay. Well, it's got to go through your mouth, your esophagus, your stomach. It's got to go into your small intestine, your large intestine, get transported across that into your bloodstream. Bloodstream has got to transport it where it needs to go. Then it's got to go into the brain, into the right spot. And by the time that that whole process happens, you've already lost your game. That's way too late. <laughs> um, so the performance has already been compromised at that point. If you are experiencing thirst, then uh, it, it's too late. You um, And I like to tell people that hydration for tomorrow starts today and hydration uh, for, you know, 
today started yesterday. So, so you really got to make sure that you, because remember 24 to 48 hours to adjust hydration status. So you got to make sure that you're pre-planning for this. And uh, you mentioned, you know, having, having some kind of schedule or having some kind of routine or the refillable waters. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the refillable water containers. Um, and uh, if, if you can just make a rule for yourself, like, oh, I got to drink this at least twice in a day or whatever, depending on your particular measurement. Um, I can give you some numbers too, if you want for like actual prescriptions, but um, having that rule in place, regardless of what it is, um, that goes a long way with the refillables. Just be like, all right, I know every day by noon, I got to finish it once. And then by the end of the workday, I got to finish it twice. And then maybe I have a little bit afterwards or something. Um, those kind of things go a really long way to making sure that you are protected. And I, I, I found also that the obnoxious colors tend to help too, because it's always like ever present. I know mine's only black, but um, you know, there's like fun yellow and neon colors and stuff like that, that you can guy that, that uh, really, um, really stick out. So you can't miss it. <laughs> nice. Well, I, I think, um, yeah, I like that we spent some time on this because it is, it's really critical and it is something that everybody can get right. You don't need to go and buy something fancy necessarily to, to, to get this right. You just have to think ahead. You have to know how, how important it is and think ahead with your planning and then just habituate some kind of a routine uh, behind it. And then, then you'll be fine um, with this, yeah. I think. And, and you know, you, you know, you know, your schedule the best, you know, your windows the best, you know, your sort of habits the best. So I think people can make like their own decisions on this. That will be very helpful. As long as they understand that it should be a priority. And, and it, I think it is, it is a huge deal. It's, it's one of those things where, you know, it's hard for us it's hard for us to to notice about ourselves things like our own emotions you know especially i feel like for, for men it's it's more difficult um in general just it's harder for us to be aware of, of some of these things that are happening inside of us and so just having the awareness of 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 like a lot of these different things that might impact performance it, it's just it's just honestly it's very difficult so we know drinking water is very good just 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 get a good, good routine for it and uh, you'll be good to go um and with that yeah. said you know oh sorry go Can ahead I can I say one quick little thing about that too? Yeah. Um, I think what you said is is really, really insightful because not a lot of people realize that. Um, especially in the realm of cognitive performance, because all of your perceptions are in your brain, right? If your brain is not functioning at 100%, what if it's just functioning at 99% or 98%? That's not something that you can perceive because you are in that perception. You are in that 98% perception. And so what we see a lot of the time is that people only can perceive something about themselves relative to a previous state of themselves. So um, what I mean by this is, as a, as a good example, is like um, when people are uh, sleep restricted, so they don't get enough sleep. When you're sleep restricted and then you um, take some caffeine, for example, people will be like, oh, this caffeine made me feel better. It improved my performance by like 50% or something like that, right? But if you compared their baseline performance, if they were well, well slept to the sleep restriction plus caffeine situation, what you would see is that well slept is up here, sleep restriction is down here, and you add a little bit of caffeine and you're like here. And there's this huge delta that you don't even realize is occurring because you're trapped into your own perceptions. And, and the very similar occurrence happens with, with hydration status, where when you're dehydrated, you don't know that it's impacting your performance really because you're stuck in there. And so um, you would really have to measure, you would need some outside uh, you know, tool to, to measure that for you to really point out that, oh, actually you are 5% worse today than you were yesterday. And uh, if, you're, if you're stuck in it, then you mentioned it's maybe a little bit harder for guys too, just to have that kind of like self-awareness. Um, I, I would agree, I've seen that, um, at least in my personal experience. But um, yeah, it's it's really important to have a plan and to to be um, to be to to stick to it because you might not be able to notice it yourself. Yeah, definitely. And and uh, to everybody who's who's watching this, your your body deserves to be hydrated, right? So, so give it <laughs> yeah. give it what it needs. Um, yeah. Right. So we have about twenty to thirty minutes remaining. Obviously, we're going to have to do <laughs> multiple. Uh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. You oh can no, totally Give me the fine. kill signal when I'm like talking too much. <laughs> oh no, it's perf it's perfectly fine because we have to cover all these topics. I think at least to a satisfactory level because it is stuff that people again don't really talk about, and it is it is important. I think I mean, at least for me, it is important and interesting to have a fuller picture because it then then it creates more of a, a value and more and therefore more of a priority to think about or consider this thing if there's all this wealth of evidence behind it that makes it be you know be something that I should be focusing on because it's important and I wouldn't necessarily because when people say oh what is oh, what is really important drink it I mean 
we all know that like we all know that <laughs> but 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 how do we how much do we know behind that answer that, that we can then relate to what we are doing in our everyday life that then says oh well obviously this makes sense for me to actually do this and get off my ass and, and try to figure it out so um <laughs> So with that said, um, I mean, there's many topics, but uh, you know, getting into nutrition, um, I think. So I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you choose here because um, <laughs> I know you can. You can really <laughs> talk uh, about 